Mother Teresa, Gandhi, Albert Einstein. Is it possible these enlightened historical figures were total scumbags? It's possible. That's what we're trying to decide on Scumbags of History, where we pick through the dirty underwear pile of the lesser known facts about some of the famous people society has put on a pedestal. Yeah. Never put anything on a pedestal. We're your host, Confirmed Scumbags. I'm Brittany Schmidt. I'm a teen steward. Let's get started. Let's get started. I'm talking about scumbags of history. Talking about these people suck ass. They were pieces of shit. They still pieces of shit. Scumbags of history. Scumbags of history. Today we're talking about Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss. Not Dr. Phil. Dr. Seuss. I know what you're thinking. You silly goose. The Dr. Seuss, what kind of scumbaggery could he produce? Was that what you were thinking, Mateen? That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. I don't um, know. Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss. Let's just say it's not easy to find cute words that rhyme with xenophobia and philandering. <laughs> <laughs> Xenophobia and philandering. Xenophobia. I don't even really know what philandering is. Low key, high key, all the keys. All right, tell me what you know about Dr. Seuss. All right, so I know Dr. Seuss. He wrote um, a lot of books. Mm -hmm. Some of the most iconic books of our childhood, mm -hmm. of a lot of people's childhood. Even my daughter, we were reading um, the Green Eggs and Ham book. Mm -hmm. It used to be one of my favorite books, Green Eggs and Ham. You know, I always it always weirded me out because I'm like, why are the eggs green? Yeah. Are they rotten? Are we poor? But what then happened? The, then the ham was also green. Right. It wasn't even like a regular food. ham. It was like green eggs and ham. I am, I am, Sam, I am, I will not. And then the thing about it is like, what did Sam, I am do to the guy to be like, yo, man, I don't give a fuck what you are doing. I'm not going to eat this shit with you. Now, was it the green eggs and ham they was Sam worried about? Sam, I am and green eggs and ham. But yeah, so it was like, I'm not going to do this with you. I'm not going to do this with you, Sam I am. So was it he worried about the green eggs of him or he just didn't want to eat it with Sam I am? Well, I don't know. Sam I am seems sus, but I would be more concerned that the eggs are green. Yeah, because I mean, if they're green eggs, then they're also with, it's Dr. Seuss. But also he wrote The Grinch, which is iconic. It is iconic. Like Jim Carrey as well, the Grinch. Jim Carrey as anything <laughs> is is great, but I know, but without Seuss, there wouldn't have been the Jim Carrey adaptation of the Grinch, and that is you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Mr. Grinch. I didn't. Even, I've never read the book, but I I know the cartoon, and he also wrote Cat in the Hat, mm -hmm. One Fish, Blue Fish, Red Fish. Yeah. Okay. So you know, you I get. Know, you I know get him. The gist. I know. I know of his works. He's an icon. A uh, children's stories yeah yeah duck duck goose dr seuss duck duck goose dr seuss but apparently he apparently, was a fucking scumbag well he was a little scummy let's see so he was born theodore seuss gazelle oh so seuss is like his real seuss is his middle name oh, I in was, 1904 I, just, I thought it was just a moniker no the beloved dr seuss wrote and illustrated 60 children's books uh, under his pen name his okay. illus his illustrious career began with and to think that I saw it on Mulberry Street in okay, 1930. Know you know that one. And, I, and to think I saw it on Mulberry Street. Okay, I don't know that one. Okay. Um, but it took Horton Hears a Who in 1940 to make him a bestseller and The Cat in the Hat and The Grinch Who Stole Christmas in 57 to make him a household name. Books like One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish, and Green Eggs and Ham were designed to help children learn to read while cautionary tales like The Lorax articulated Seuss's stance on social is issues like environmental causes. Yeah, I like that Lorax. Lorax is like... I just saw the movie recently. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was good. But it's crazy that like this is 1957 and we're just making movies now from his books. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, but he's also just like that. He in is... 1957, he was actually talking about like environmental stuff. Like we need to stop cutting down the trees. Right. Because the trees are all gone. Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? What? Still a problem. Still a problem. <laughs> still, a problem. still a problem. Nobody <laughs> listened. They're like, cute book. We're yeah, going to keep cutting down, gonna the cut down the trees. We're going to cut down more trees to print more books. Put more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny that he wrote a book about cutting down the trees right. and his books were printed on, on paper. On trees. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He received the special Pulitzer Prize in 84 for his contribution to the education and enjoyment of America's children. Yes. Didn't know that was a Pulitzer Prize. Yeah. He, he's really big. Like any any school in America, you will find a Dr. Seuss book. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. Iconic. By the early 21st century, an estimated 600 million copies of Seuss's books had been sold worldwide. So many trees. <laughs> so 
so <laughs> many trees. So many trees. Yeah, all of the trees. Yes. Some would say. Okay, so those are the good things about it. Tell them. me, tell me about your experiences with Dr. Seuss. So I mean, I remember, I remember the Cat in the Hat might have been the first book that I ever read by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also, I would, I would always get weirded out by it because I was like, first off, this this cat just came into the house, and then just just fucked the house up. <laughs> And then he brought up these two weirdo things, thing one and thing two, to clean it up. Um, but yeah, I, that was my first book that I ever read was The Cat in the Hat. And then, I was a slutty thing one for a Halloween one. Oh, yeah. I think that's that's a theme. You were always like a slutty thing. <laughs> um, who, was there a slutty thing too? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. Do you, like, was there more my things? My friend Lauren. Yeah, no. Were there more things? Just thing one and thing two? Or just thing one and thing two. Okay, slutty thing one and thing two. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, that was like that was like very iconic for me because it was the first book I read. But then I read all the books. I read Green Eggs of Ham, Horn of Heroes of Who. Okay. I've never read The Grinch. I just saw the movie, um, The Lorax, um, One Fish, Two Fish. What about Hop on Pop? Hop on Pop. That was another one. Hop on Pop. I remember I read Hop on Pop, and then I would like hop, on, like violently hop on my stepdad, uh-huh. and he was like, "I am not your pop." <laughs> I'm not your pop. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> Stop. I'm Stop. not your pop. I think wasn't that the one when the the, guy, the dad's like, "Yo, chill out." Just yeah. like, and then he's like, "I just want to be yeah. loved." Yeah. That was yeah. Me. He has like a recollection. Um. Uh, yeah. So like that was me. I'm sure like everybody. Everyone knows Dr. Seuss. Everyone reads Dr. Seuss. Yeah. If you live in America, if you're part of the the American culture, he's. He's a cultural icon. Yeah. I also remember just like everything. Schools, doctor's offices, like waiting rooms at a doctor's mm-hmm. office filled with Dr. Seuss. Yeah. They had the. I was like, I want to see Dr. Seuss, actually. Yeah, I don't want to see my doctor. I thought I thought the I thought the cat in the hat was Dr. Seuss. Yeah. He would. He was like always on. The... I thought he was a real doctor. Yeah. That was just his name. Yeah, it was just his name. Okay. So here's what you don't know about Seuss. Seuss credits his expert use of rhyming to his mother, who would weirdly recite poems to him at bedtime. One of her favorites was memorized from working in her father's bakery and went, apple, mince, lemon, peach, apricot, pineapple, blueberry, coconut, custard, and squash. That doesn't rhyme. That's not rhyme. What the hell, Dr. Seuss? <laughs> that's not even. That doesn't even rhyme. Yeah. That's just a list of things. That's, that's the grocery the list. The grocery list. <laughs> that's the thing that the bakery needed to pick None up. None of that rhymes. Yeah. She's so maybe like, he was like, this bitch can't rhyme, yeah, so I got to figure out yeah. how to rhyme things. He's like, I'm going to have to pick up yes. where she left Pick up, up the slack. Yeah. He adopted his pen name after being kicked off the editorial board of his college, Dartmouth's humor magazine, so the Jack o' Lantern. Yeah, he went to Dartmouth. Ivy League. When he was caught drinking gin in his dorm during Prohibition, he continued to write for it under the name Dr. Seuss. Okay, so he's finding gin during the Prohibition. So he ha- he was connected. He's my kind of guy. He's getting his gin drunk writing kids books. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way to write anything. Yeah. Is getting drunk. Get drunk. Yeah. yeah. He started drawing political cartoons for the left if- a leftist paper in 1941. He tried to join the Navy to fight in World War II, but he was instead asked to make war propaganda films, more propaganda, with famous director Frank Capra. He helped create the cartoon character Private Snafu, a very dumb soldier who taught new recruits how to behave. One Snafu cartoon began, it's so cold it would freeze the nuts off a jeep. Freeze the nuts off a jeep. I don't so even he, know. So he left. He wanted to be in... So that that means he was really good at what he did because if they're like he's like I want to go fight they're like no nah, we need no to, we're gonna need you to doodle to doodle <laughs> for our propaganda or he was so bad he was so weak they're like, like you're, yeah like nah bro they're like you're three sheets to the wind yeah, you're wasted on gin right now let's just uh, let's just draw yeah. some things right now yeah we're gonna need you to write a poem what, what is that what is that called doc um, private snafu private snafu can we can we see what private snafu looks like. Private, private snafu. snafu. The so they would, they would make cartoons about private it's snafu. So well, I mean, it's propaganda. So yeah, I would imagine it's. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah, private, private, snafu. private snafu. Yeah. Fuck up. Like a yeah. So he was a he was like he, a, a he doofus. always screwed up. But that's the bit, if it's propaganda, it's like this is what not to do. So yeah. So private was, snafu shows you what not, not to, to do. do. Oh, look at you, <laughs> Doctor Seuss over here. I know. Okay, he wrote two adult books, including The Seven Lady well, Good like Di- for adults or like... Adult books. Oh, like for adults, okay. Adult books. 
Like sexy books. Sexy books. Oh, wow. The Seven Lady Godivas, The True Facts Concerning History's Barest Family About a Bunch of Naked Sisters. Oh, okay. So it was an adult. An adult book. A book of look. Look at the book. Look at the book. It's an adult book. Look for the nook. Snook. I don't know. Let's go. The Women's Crudely Rendered... Oh, it's about women's crudely rendered breasts. It was a flop. Like my... (laughs) No pun intended. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's about women's breasts and it yeah, was a, a flop, flop. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah look at them this has to stop okay and they're writing so on the cover of the book you have seven us uh, one two three four five six seven seven, seven women of all different shapes and sizes but I'm not like, colors they're all white they're all white and they all have different hairstyles and they're riding on what seems to be like a gray horse dog of mm-hmm. some sorts mm-hmm. and they're all naked but you can't really see anything so yeah, you can was, see the bazonkas. You can, you can see, see the, the titties. Butts, the butts. You can see the butts. titties. Look they got at a big the girl in there. I like to see that. Look at look. He was body positive. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was all over it. Yeah, okay, but Dr. as long Seuss. as you're peach. Yeah, as long as you're white. As long as you're white, he's yeah, body positive. White is right. Yeah, Doctor Seuss. We know him. We love him. But we love him. But he's but, a scumbag because he's here. He's here. Yeah. He you, wouldn't be on this show if he wasn't a scumbag. Yeah. You may have heard that in 2021, publishing company Dr. Seuss Enterprises announced that it would stop publishing six of Seuss's books that they believe to p- portray people in ways that are hurtful or wrong. Yes. This led to much outcry over Seuss's cancellation, which is, I mean, canceling a dead person. Is is dumb. Is stupid. The world already canceled him. Yeah. He's dead. <laughs> God canceled his ass. Also, he was a white man. In the time when he could right, do whatever in he war wanted times. in wartime. Yeah. He was the top of the food chain. Yeah. And he could draw. And yeah. he had a gin plug. Yeah. So he was doing great. He was doing okay. I mean, yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm not a, I'm okay, not Okay, let's see what else happened okay, here. Okay, this list of retired books included If I Ran the Zoo, in which the narrator said he wanted to put a chieftain, i.e. a man pictured in a turban, on display in the titular zoo. Two African characters are rendered as monkeys. Monkeys. And a posse of Asian characters are described as helpers who all wear their eyes at a slant. Wear their eyes at a slant. Not their eyes are slanted, but they just they wear, their wear eyes them at, at a slant. So they, so from they, countries no one can spell. Okay, so I can spell Asia. I can spell Asia. That's a continent. Oh. <laughs> by the way, I can spell Japan. I can I, spell China. China. I mean, but like, like I just don't think that's a good dig. But maybe they can't. You can't spell it how it, it sounds. Can you spell Nihongo? What? That's that's what Japan is called. Oh, so like these, we these, have Americanized yeah, we, ways yeah, of saying their yeah, countries. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Um. I guess so, that makes sense, and yeah, I feel incredibly yeah. dumb and that's, right now. That's why you can spell them. Uh, mm. So, so, he, so he had a, the titular okay. zoo. So he had the man in a turban, and he had black two black people as monkeys. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so that's a uh, that's pretty racist to have not black great. people as monkeys. Sign of the times, but not. It great. is a sign of the times, but I never, I never really got that black people as monkeys. I mean, I think oh, there's a people. Ask the question, and this is from <laughs> pure. Pure, just asking the question. Yes, I'm ready. Is for that it. something that they were doing at that time often outside of Seuss books, or was he the, he's he the only person? No, they were doing it all the yeah. time. So it's so, not like I mean, it's not like he was doing something that was different. Right. It it was wrong, but it was everyone was doing the wrong. Thing. Yeah, I mean, I feel for me, it's a, it's a learning thing. You were like, oh yeah, this was made in 1950, whatever, but like. I get why people are mad about it, but. Okay, so his racist imagery predates his books. The extensive study of Seuss's cartoons by the founders of the Conscious Kids Social Justice Library, hate that name, noted that his advertising work, Seuss consistently portrayed Africans and African Americans as monkeys and cannibals. Cannibals. I mean, that's also a sign of the times. Because, like, it it was all, like, uh, the the only cannibal I know is the one from Silence of the Lambs. No, but like that was a thing where like African people were savages and cannibals, and they would have the bones in their noses and all these other things. So that happened with like the Looney Tunes, uh, Walt Disney, all these char- racist characters where they would have depicted black people as these these things. So that is also a sign of the times. Okay, so including a series of ads for Esso Marine Oil and Grease drawn between 1934 and 1936, which featured a topless Negro mermaid and black sailors with ape faces. 
The study notes that I told you I shouldn't have done this one. The study notes <laughs> that these cartoons were done during a decade when an average of 10 black people were lynched each year. Yeah. So so these these are these are facts. These are all facts. And this also like this is a sign of the time. So he was doing all these things at a time where everyone was doing these things. Right. And I don't know why people are surprised by this. Right. Yeah. See, that's the thing. I'm obviously not trying to defend him because this shit is abhorrent. But like. We were all abhorrent. Yeah. Like. We were all behaving very badly. Yeah. And I feel like this is these shows like us where we come and we tell people this is what we're doing. But like if you erase it, if you say like you just take it away, then you have no idea that the guy that wrote Cat in the Hat. For me, I feel like all these things that he's doing it's it's just what what was going on at the time yeah so it's just like do i do i defend do i do i agree with it no but do i think that erasing it and not having it out there where 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 people are like are able to access uh if it is accessible for people i think it should be i don't think you should erase it because then you erasing it doesn't take away that it happened Totally. So let's keep going with because he was he's a writer. He wasn't like a president or like right, a, right, right, right. Like a, a okay. So in 1920, in a 1929 cartoon, a group of thick-lipped black men, thick-lipped black men, yeah. are depicted as being up for sale to a group of white men. Uh-huh. In one of his flit ads, a disgusted white woman says to a black man, "You hold a job worthless." Say N word when you hold a job a week. Mosquitoes will brush their teeth with flit and like it. Yeah, he was a he was a racist. <laughs> <laughs> he was a he was a white man that grew up in, like I, I it was a yeah. Why is anybody surprised by this? I'm not surprised. It's just like it's not even creative. Like Cat in the Hat and everything that he did that yeah. wasn't racist was kind of dope. And yeah. like his racist shit is just it's racist. Like, yeah, just it's just it's flat like out mean like, and yeah. racist. Yeah. And like like he it's not, not even creative. It's not even rhyming. Like right. he's rhyming. <laughs> right. He's taking a page out of his mom's book. Yeah, for rhyming. Like no rhymes. <laughs> yeah, no just rhymes. all hate. <laughs> yeah, During, don't be late. Yeah, we will hate. <laughs> yeah. During World War II, Seuss drew Japanese people as pigs with snouts, snakes, monkeys, and cats, and frequently used captions that replaced R's with L's to reference the stereotype that Japanese people can't say R sound. That is a that's a deep cut. That's a deep cut. In one cartoon, a Japanese man comes out of a box labeled Jap War Threat with the caption Veli Scary Jap in the Box. Vel, the Veli, Veli, sc- Veli oh Scary my God. Jap in the Box. That's like that's like <laughs> I feel like I just got tricked into reading that. Um, Literally right as Japanese people were being rounded up and placed in internment camps. Seuss published a cartoon that showed them as hateful saboteurs holding grenades. One of his World War II propaganda films, Our Job in Japan, told soldiers that they needed to re-educate the backwards Japanese people. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he was was big on propaganda. He was doing all these things while we were at war with the Japanese people. In yeah. Japan, he was doing all this stuff right. while people were going in internment camps. Right. In a review of his children's books, the study's authors found that, according to Vox, all 45 characters of color were either subservient, exotified, dehumanized, or some combination of the three. Dr. Seuss's characters of color derived carriages for whip-wielding white characters, dress in turbans and rice paddy hats, and never speak out loud. Yeah, so they were just like... This guy was pretty. He was a fucking awful person. He was racist down to the fucking like, like, core. Yeah, because it's like sometimes it doesn't even seem necessary to do all these things. And right. He's just like he's like pushing it, pushing it to the limit. Yeah. And he's just making. But like I said, this is what was going on at the time. And I I think for people to try to erase it, like oh yeah, we. Well, I don't take think these anyone's trying away. to erase it. I think they're just trying to bring light to the fact that he was trash. Yeah, but they wanted but to take, like, the, okay, take so the books away. I have a question. He's trash. Obviously, he's trash. But if he wanted to fight for his country and go to war, and then the government was like, actually, no, we need you to do this propaganda, is it actually the government and the people that are have that are commissioning this art from him that want this out there? Of course. Yeah. 
Right. So I'm like, how much of it is what he believes and how much of it is what the government is telling him to publish? Yeah. I mean, that is uh, because just, that's at the, that's a big part of I'm not defending him, by yeah. the way. He's trash, obviously. But I mean, that's I, a big I, part. I think it's it's like half a dozen in one and right. six in the other where it's like he's like, yeah, I'll do this because I want to do it. But also that all that stuff was just what it was like the whole you see these pictures of like the black people eating the watermelons and like right the sl- sh- slow sli- uh shiftless characters and yeah there was this guy um step and fetch it who played the like sambo characters and he was like yeah man, yeah 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 but this guy was just doing his job and, right and he was making millions of dollars yeah and people hated him for it because he was but it was like well people didn't hate him at the time no he was like famous well white people didn't well yeah well step perfectly like black people hate him because he was perpetuating right right like if like i would be more surprised if it was a, like a black guy that was doing all this stuff or like doing this I'm, I'm not surprised by it but i think there is that element of like he was doing this propaganda because he was working for the government but also right i feel that essentially he did believe some of this shit. right yeah. so it's worth noting that seuss also drew cartoons history can side with which critiqued the military's jim crow politics as well as hitler's nazi germany so in a book called Was the Cat in the Hat Black, English professor Philip Nell argues that the cat in the hat's look was heavily reminiscent of minstrel shows and blackface, even if unintentionally so. So, yeah, so that is where what I was just talking about was Step and Fetch It, where like the the blackface in the minstrel shows where like white white artists would put on blackface and be these black characters. Right. And be like, oh, Martha, I don't want to be doing this whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, and I mean now I've never thought about that, but like I can see that how the cat in the hat could be seen as that. Yeah, this, you I should, just you should I see just her can't. face. Her face right now, everybody. Just, She's just like it's just the white guilt that is just sitting on her shoulders right now. It's I just, just a, the weight of white guilt is she's even sunking down. So I in mean, her yeah, chair. yeah, I'll sit up. Um, okay, <laughs> the, it is heavy. It so is this heavy. is why I'm conflicted because he does have like anti Jim Crow stuff, anti yeah. Nazi stuff. So it's like, what's his and what's the government's? Yeah, and because he specifically said that he he did not go he wanted to fight and they're like nah we yeah need they're like you. no we need you to doodle do, do, do and then stuff. they're like make this horrific yeah. shit yeah so it's like what is him and what's the government and what's propaganda we'll never know because he's dead okay but beyond the subtle and blatant racism in his book dr seuss had some other unappealing qualities unappealing thank okay. god yeah well thank god he's not just <laughs> not just the racist, racist or like yeah. a white man that was born from 19 right 100 to 19 Right. present okay <laughs> these were be- <laughs> these were best exhibited on his nearly 40 year old marriage to helen palmer gazelle okay helen and ted met at oxford where helen noticed him doodling in class she told him that's a very fine flying cow so this is his wife mm-hmm. okay. and insisted what you really want to do is draw she later said she talked him out of being an english professor writing that ted's notebooks were always filled with all these fabulous animals so i set to work diverting him oh that's right because he did all the drawings too yeah so he wrote the books and drew the books. yeah okay here was a man who could draw such pictures he should be earning a living doing that they had a literal whirlwind whirlwind romance and after toppling them off wait toppling them off the street on his motorcycle he proposed to her in a roadside ditch okay oh, wow. what a hopeless romance yeah throws her off the motorcycle we're on a like, ditch will you be my bitch <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we have a sitch we have a sitch we're in a ditch be <laughs> my bitch <laughs> oh my uh, god ted according to a friend depends at all times on the level-headedness of his wife helen she considered herself seuss's chief editor chief critic business manager and wife and boss found, bitch boss bitch yeah and founded beginner books seuss's random house publishing imprint so yeah seuss had an insanely supportive wife who has only ever encouraged his craft. Unfortunately, Helen had major health problems over a decade. So she was sick for 10 years? Yes, including Guillain-Barre syndrome, a rare immune disorder that left her partially paralyzed. Ooh. So what does Seuss do? I bet it's not good. I was saying, I was saying did he stay with her? <laughs> he starts cheating with okay. a married neighbor and close friend of the couple, Audrey Diamond, okay. who had two children and was nearly 20 years his junior. So if she's sick... 
Mm-hmm. Is it is it cheating really? If she's sick, she's sick, right? Are you being serious? No, yeah, yeah, it's still so cheating. If, so if you get sick, you have a you have a paralyzed. You're you're paralyzed. It's the same thing as Stephen Hawking. But he was just just cheating, even though he couldn't. No, but I'm saying. Move. But you're paralyzed, right? Mm-hmm. She's you, paralyzed. Yeah, she's paralyzed. He's not. So he's out there slanging dick. Yeah, but I'm just saying though, should he not be able to? Like, if I'm paralyzed, I want. If I'm married to somebody, go go have fun, go do whatever you want to do. I don't disagree, but the asking fundamentally is it cheating? Yes, of course it is. <sighs> tomato, tomato. Uh, tomato, potato. Unless yeah. they have a written arrangement, which okay. So anyway, so he, he start, starts. So he starts boinking the neighbor who's yeah. 20 years younger than him which seems reasonable yeah tormented by her illnesses and her suspicions of ted's infide- infidelity so he so he okay so he didn't tell her so he was just doing it he should have just been like yo you paralyzed i need to go go dip my my stick wouldn't it be funny if she was paralyzed from that motorcycle accident yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, she had this disease. She had a disease. Okay, no. So tormented by her illness. Women stay in those situations. Men don't. In what situations? What like when a, if a man is paralyzed, a woman will stay by himself. That's not true. What's her name left? Who? Hawking's wife left. I know, but in most cases, if you look at holistically, if there's some if there's some illness, like a woman will will be more dedicated to a man than a man. I will think be. that might be a stereotype. No, I think it's. I, I think, think if somebody gets I, paralyzed. And whether you're a man or a woman, you're fucking out. But, it's no, like, I know situations. I know two situations specifically where the where the woman stayed and just didn't didn't do anything, and the man was like, "Yo, go find somebody." She's like, "No, I made a vow." Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I'd yeah. be like, "See you later." Yeah. Okay. So tormented by her illnesses and her suspicions of Ted's infidelity, Helen committed suicide. Committed suicide. She in killed herself. Nineteen sixty-seven, consuming. 294 barbiturate pills that would do it that's so many that's how a did lot. she even get her hands on that many how do you swallow that much that's a lot 300 pills yeah just just <sighs> and i think fewer could have done the trick but i mean she wanted to make sure yeah we do not condone suicide on no, this no, podcast no, no. but Go also. seek help if you need to talk to somebody helen left a suicide note writing dear ted what has happened to us? Well, bitch, you left. So, um, dear Ted, I am dead. <laughs> dear Ted. <laughs> How was that not the note? Dear Ted, I am dead. Your hands are red. <laughs> <laughs> dear Ted, what has happened to us? I don't know. I feel myself in a spiral going down, down, down. Well, yeah, because you took 300 pills yeah. into a black hole from which there is no escape, no brightness, and loud in my ears from every side I hear failure, failure, failure. I love you so much. I'm too old and too enmeshed in everything you do and are that I cannot conceive a life without you. My going will leave quite a rumor, but you can say I was overworked and overwrought. Your reputation with your friends and fans will not be harmed. Sometimes think of the fun we had through all the years. Wow, that's fucking powerful right there, man. Imagine reading that. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. He lit that out because we have it, but like, damn it. Yeah, I don't think I would let anybody read that. I wouldn't. I would have burnt that shit. I don't know. She's a down bitch. Down, down, down. Down, 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 bitch. <laughs> she said down, down, down three times. Yeah. And failure, failure, failure three times. Depressingly, it seems that even in moments before her death, Helen's main focus was on protecting the legacy she had oh, yeah, helped she Ted mentioned build. That yeah, the, that's what it, at, behind all these guys is a bitch like who did everything. Everything. I'm with everything, you. everything. I don't want. I don't want. I don't want this to harm you. Yeah, but the, I can't live without you. The gazelle's niece Peggy later said that Helen's suicide was her last and greatest gift to him. Mm. Yikes. Okay. Ted's mistress, Audrey, later said that the fallout from the affair and the suicide made a rather large ripple in the community of La Jolla. <laughs> <laughs> a large ripple in La Jolla. La Jolla. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> not much going down in La Jolla, but this suicide yeah. death, it made a yeah. large ripple in our community. Not that I was fucking this paraplegic's husband. Paraplegic's husband? No, no, Well, she's no. paralyzed. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. After the suicide, Audrey immediately divorced her husband and Ted married her a year after Helen's death. So at mm. least they did get married. They got married. True love, baby. Yeah. That never happened. No. I mean, a lot of, no. 
No, he never leaves. Well, I guess she left She him. left her husband because she was also married. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I'm just saying the guy never leaves the woman, but the woman technically committed suicide. Yeah, so she's so left. It's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He didn't actually technically. Okay. Only problem. Ted did not like kids. He famously loved. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. Dr. Seuss hated kids. Hated kids. That is hilarious. <laughs> that's really funny. He famously he loved. Hated, he especially hated black kids. <laughs> <laughs> He famously loves saying of children, you have them and I'll entertain them. So Audrey sent her two children away to boarding school. Audrey Ooh. later said they wouldn't have been happy with Ted and Ted wouldn't have been happy with them. She added to Ted's hard, Ted's a hard man to break down, but this is who he was. Just a kid hating racist. <laughs> Cheating on my Cheating paraplegic on my wife. wife. Yeah. Well, the married woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who left her husband for him? Uh huh. And then sent this man's kids to boarding school because he could not be bothered by them. Right, because he he's probably like, give him my books and send them yeah, on their way. Give him, a, give him, yeah. get him out of here. Ironic to think that history's most beloved children's book writer maybe wasn't all that fond of kids. Well, not maybe he yeah, definitely 100%. wasn't. But that goes back to the thing where like most people that who present themselves as one thing are complete opposite. It's like that story where you find like. This like anti-gay pastor Who's is on grounder, well. like yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all a charade. It's all a charade. It's all man. a fucking charade. All right, scumbag score. Scumbag score. We have to agree on a score between one to a hundred based on their scumbag. I mean, we don't have to agree on a score. We just each well, that's give our what score. the fucking prompt says. But we'll give our own scores. What's your scumbag score for old Seuss? Doctor Seuss. Seuss is loose. The Seuss is loose. If I had to do a score while I'm looking at the door, I might soar and say 84. Ooh. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Ooh. Hey. I go on 84. 84. Um, yeah. I mean, he did do a lot of good things with the 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 books, with the children's book, and he has he does have a, a lasting impression on me from mm -hmm. the books, but like I didn't know. I didn't know all the racist stuff that mm -hmm. he that he did. I mean, when it came out a few years ago, I wasn't like surprised. It was the pandemic, was, I yeah, remember. Yeah, so we pandemic. were like, we were like, because it felt like they were just searching for shit yeah. to, to for news stories. But I'm not surprised. Like I'm never surprised when an old white man is racist, right. specifically, right? Um, because that's just how the time was. You right. Know what I mean? It's just who it was, and like, it was more prevalent that you were than if you if you weren't, and so. I, I never thought about that thing that you said where it was like, oh, yeah, maybe he was doing some things uh, that the government just had him doing. But then he did some other shit on his own. And then, like, the the hating the kids thing, that's, yeah, that's pretty bad. Oh, I understand hating kids. I know that's you do. That's the most relatable I know, I know, thing I know you do. You're to me. A, you're not a kid's person. I'm a kid's guy. but Well, thank God, because um, you have one. I do. I, even before that, I was, like, surrounded by kids. Yeah, you were a teacher. Yeah, so... Yeah. Um, See, I understand not liking kids. Kids annoy me. Yeah. Um, the racist stuff is hard to even. It was. It was hard read. to read. It was hard to. Read. I wish you guys could see. You, you could see her, but her face. It's she hard was just sinking to even into her. Read. <laughs> it is <laughs> atrocious, <laughs> ah, ah. and I don't. I don't want to play devil's advocate, but I do wonder how much is him versus how much is what he was commissioned to, to do. do. Yeah. Because there is the part where it's like he's anti Jim Crow, he's anti Nazi. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like there's like some things that there's are some like, elements. Yeah, like what did he really believe? I don't think we're ever gonna really know that. Yeah. Um, I think there's a ton of really horrific racist shit, hating kids. I actually relate to um a scumbag scale, I would say. I think I'm going to agree with you at 84. 84. Yeah, I think 84. That's good. Solid. Yeah. I think cheating on the paralyzed wife is. We're not telling her like this is you wanted something different. Well, do you want to know when you're paralyzed and like you. I would I would see if, as I'm paralyzed. You I would be say like, that, yeah. but I don't think you like, if you're paralyzed and you would be bummed if you if the answer is he's fucking the neighbor. As long as I could watch. I'd be fine. No, well, this is your creepy old man. She's <laughs> a fucking devastated woman who has built this guy's empire. Yeah, and she, it was like, it was gradual too. So yeah. I always, met. but also I'm thinking like maybe, what if she didn't write that and he just wrote it and like to make it seem. No, if he would have wrote it, it would have been 
Yeah, better. It would have been a lot it rhymey. Been better, yeah. It would have been more rhymey. It would have been what you said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dear Ted, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Don't tell Fred. <laughs> Don't tell Fred. <laughs> That's um, what I said. All right. Do we still stand today's scumbag? Now let's factor in Dr. Seuss's legacy. Does the good outweigh the bad? Does amusing generations of children forgive virulent racism and screwing the neighbor? No. Yeah. He's still a scumbag. He's a scumbag. He's a scumbag. I think we're all scumbags. We're, you all, know? we're all a little scumbaggy. I think we're all scumbags. I think none of us know until our spouse is crippled whether or not we would cheat on them. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, I'd probably be with the Seuss on this yeah, one. The I'd Seuss be, is loose. The Seuss is loose. The Seuss is loose. Seuss, I do like that he just gave himself the name of doctor and he doctor. had no. No, 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 no. doctor. Just doctor. Like Dr. Yeah. Phil. Yeah. He was the first Dr. Phil. He just made himself a doctor. He right. was like, I'm a doctor. Theodore. Dr. Seuss. Ted. Ted. All right. So for all the fans, have you guys ever made a joke that aged poorly? I mean, calling this a joke that ages poorly. Yeah. Like, <laughs> calling racism a joke that ages poorly. <laughs> did you ever, did you ever publish 17,000 books that, <laughs> that aged poorly? <laughs> I don't. I mean, it's we've all had jokes that age poorly. We've all had jokes that age poorly, but also we're two people who say whatever the fuck we want to say, right. mostly on stage. And like, I think it's it's different from us, from the people who listen here. Like, you might, right? You you can't do the things, you can't say the things that we're saying. Like, I forget who said it the other day, where it's like, oh, everyone's like comedians, we can't say anything. Like, no, you can say as comedians, anything. we can say anything. It's the yeah. people that work in the office, right? That that can't say anything um so yeah if there's a is there if it was like a bad joke that you said or uh something that offended somebody that you would probably get fired for today let us know yeah that's our show for today if you're enjoying scumbags of history prove you're not a scumbag by giving us a five-star review on apple podcasts or anywhere that you're listening and subscribe now for future episodes i'm Brittany schmidt and i'm Mateen stewart see you next time scumbags yes, scumbags